You know, you never mind. your own jokes, it's not as funny. <laughs> oh my God, never mind. I'm Josh Sigmund. And I'm Bryn Rouse. I'm a mortgage guy with a passion for helping people with their money and all things business. Bryn is my co-host. And I'm a marketing girl. I am literally obsessed with it. Oh, and Josh has showed me how to save money. Quite a bit, actually. Because of her obsession, I hired her to do my marketing. And we've worked together for 10 years. We launched Sigmund Sense in 2020, a podcast about money. It's a podcast that teaches people how to save more, give more, create wealth, and retire early. And we recorded and published 34 episodes. People liked it, and it was so fun. But most importantly, we helped people. So we're excited to announce we're doing a second season. And we're mixing things up. We're moving away from money talks to focus on all things business, leadership, management, team building, book reviews, hiring, firing, operations, motivating teams, lead generation, time management, personality profiling, closing skills, and of course money, and marketing. We are inviting you to continue this journey with us, and we want your input. What topics would you like to see covered? Email all of your ideas to our podcast email address, sigmundsense at gmail.com. And be sure to click that subscribe button when you visit our channels. You'll get notified when we drop new episodes. Are you ready? Season two, getting down to business. Welcome to Sigmund Sense. So welcome back to Sigmund Sense. And we are going to do the last piece of this whole, you know, I think it was a 10 part series uh, to help people with their businesses in general. And uh, the last piece is what should be an obvious statement, but is not always easily or well executed, which is the best businesses are always referral based businesses. Okay. So, uh, can you explain why that is or elaborate yeah, on why that is? Cause why it, because I think it's important because I feel like it almost borderline goes into cliche statements. Like you could want a referral based business, yep. but why? Well, uh, so a couple of reasons. Number one is a referral is free. So people spend tons and tons of money with marketing, with pay per click, not just the money to buy or, you know, pay for a, a website or pay for a billboard. But then you also have to have the time to field those calls and to follow up with those people, which might require more costs, like a CRM system. And a whole lot longer. And then a lot more people. And then the conversion ratio is a lot lower, okay. right? Because we always say people work with people they know, like, and trust. And what's the first thing that you want to do if you, if you need to get a touch-up paint on your house? You ask your friends, do you know a painter, right? So a warm referral is free and the conversion ratio is higher. So from a practicality of a business perspective, a referral-based business is more profitable, number one. And number two, birds of a feather tend to fly together. Mm -hmm. So if you have a client that you really liked, you enjoyed work with them, they, they love you enough to refer you, which means they probably like you as well. The chances of who they refer, knowing and liking and trusting you are much higher. And that's the kind of people I want to work with. Like, you know, um, I, I remember and I used to talk about this in a different episode, but I, I did a loan for a guy years ago. And one thing that we both had in common is we both like wine. So I re, I, at the very end of closing, um, I got him a bottle of wine because I just really liked him. And I knew that he was a, a wine guy and I got him a bottle of wine. Right. Well, guess who we referred he referred a guy that his was a wine, wine collector, buddy. his wine buddy. That story went south for a different reason, a different episode. But the point was birds of a feather, of a feather fly together. So it's instantaneous mm -hmm. connection. So I love the question. But yes, a referral-based <laughs> business is a better business than a leads-based, high, uh, high cost, high time cost kind of business, right? So what, it's only going to take us maybe 15 minutes to cover this. Yeah. I, I doubt it's going to take long at all, but it's super important to understand because. And I also think mm -hmm. the reason it won't take super long is because of the progression that we've gone through. We've yes. talked about solid lead generation. We've talked yes. about the ability to bring in your own business, how to ask for referrals, mm -hmm. how to navigate the process. Um, everything is leading up yep. to this point. Yeah. This point. So. If I'm going to kind of take the reins on the first piece, because you think in terms of before, during, and after, right? Just just break it down to that. And I'll kind of point out a few things that I'll just use our personal business, that things that I've done and we've done for years in the before and during part. And I want to hand it off to you to the after part, because as we talked about in the entire follow-up segment, most salespeople suck at following up. Yeah. Um, but I do think there's some rational thought as we progress through this. So the first thing you've got to do is... You've got to set proper expectations of 
what you, they're going to get and what yes. you expect in, in return, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. So this starts with that. Unapologetically. Perfect, right. It's a, it's setting a proper expectation. By the way, for the previous episode, we talked about an obligation close. You can literally set up a great obligation close mm-hmm. in the first meeting, okay? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what this sounds like is, uh, and regardless of the product or the service, you're going to have a different uh, elevator pitch, right? You're going to have your, your value proposition. But basically, in my world, clients, for the most part, care about getting the offer accepted, right, in the multiple offer scenario. Mm-hmm. They care about closing on time because they don't want to lose the house by being under contract, and then you don't close on time, and they sell out from underneath you. They want communication, and they want to make sure the numbers are real, right? Right. So if I say up front, hey, look, um, Brent, what I've found in our industry right now is that what's most important to clients is that they close on time, that they're communicated with proactively, that the numbers that they're presented are accurate the day of closing so they don't get any surprises. And before that even happens, that they actually went out in a multiple offer scenario. I've found those are the most important things. So what we do to make sure that happens, I guarantee my numbers to pay the difference. Mm-hmm. We do proactive live updates of every step of the process along the way. You adjusted your script. Of well course I did. We, uh, number three is that um, we, we do close on time. And number four is by, by getting a pre-approval letter from my team, in San Antonio and surrounding areas, you are more likely to get your offer accepted according to local listing agents. If I do those things for you, can I rely on you to tell your agent I took great care of you and refer your friends and family? Yes or no? Yes, for yeah. sure. It's that simple of setting proper expectations. I love right? that. And that's like up front. That's day one. Day one. And you can actually ask for referrals day one as well. Like if you were, uh, because the step two that I always think about is if it's a referral based business, you should be triangling for trust. Yeah. Minute one, second one of the first conversation. Bryn, you referred by Dan. Dan, I've been friends for a lot of years. How do you know Dan? Oh, you you you, you fish with Dan too? Amazing. Mm-hmm. Listen, you trust Dan. I trust Dan implicitly. By the end of this meeting, my hope is that you trust me enough to move forward, right? Yeah. So that triangle for trust in a referral based business is super important because we have to reaffirm over and over that hey, look, we're all friends here. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you came to me is because That's you asked you came to me, Dan right. what a great painter was, and he said I was a great painter, and I don't yeah. want to let Dan down, right? right? Why would I screw so with Dan? Yeah. The upfront piece w- is the beginning of that wow checklist to make sure you have a referral based business mm-hmm. by just doing the triangle for trust and setting up the uh, the uh, the obligation close by the, those small promises yeah. okay yep. the during part is also easier said than done but is absolutely necessary to having referral based business okay at the end of the last episode i said um, that uh, trust is earned in drips yeah and it's lost in buckets right so whatever freaking promise you, you make, you better keep. You better freaking keep Like them. if you say you're going to call somebody back by the end of the day, you better call back Boy, by the end of the day. Yeah. But if you call back by the end of the day, even if there's nothing to report and okay. you say, hey, listen, I'm sorry. I promise you to call you by five. It's almost five o'clock. I don't have that answer on the appraisal yet, but I can I'll follow up with you first thing tomorrow morning. I get in the office about nine o'clock. I should and have it by 10. Here's what first 10. thing looks like. Right. Can I call you by 10 o'clock tomorrow with an update? Yeah. No problem. Now I call by 10. Hey, good news. The appraisal is going to be in on this date. The small kept promises yes. are building trust along the way. Yes. Okay. And whatever system you need to help yourself with that, freaking figure it out. Like yep. if you need to mark your calendar for everything, if you have a to-do <coughs> list, oh, but don't miss the callback dates. Oh, God. <laughs> and that's just a <laughs> small example. But uh, you need to remember that if you have a team or a company that helps you, it's magnified for degrees of error. Holy moly. Right? Yeah. So. This has to be a constant conversation with teammates, with companies, with protocols, with checklists. Like if you promise something, you better freaking put that shit in your calendar and execute. Yes. Like get that done. And, yes. and training people on what that looks like. Because at the end of the day, I could have kept my promise 70 times in a row. And the one time that it really mattered to the client, my team didn't follow through. Didn't follow through. My referral-based business is now jeopardized. Right, because right? it is as the team leader, as the business it's owner. It's all my fault. It's your fault, you know, yeah. and that's what really sucks. And where really there's a lot of admiration for business owners because there's a ton of responsibility and you give so much trust in the team yep. to do what Yeah, and, and, do, and if I you're think. a business owner out here, I'm going to give you a little side project. Every win, let the team deliver the information. Every loss or problem, you better own it. Like you pick up the phone and say, I'm sorry, I screwed up. So and that will bit, yeah. you know, gain loyalty within a team. But it, but a client uh, can handle most of the time a apology 
One hundred percent ownership from the boss as long as there's a next steps, right? Absolutely. So we can recover from that and still keep that referral based business going. But I think too what that does is also start to groom the team that it's okay to make mistakes and I too can now own them. Yep. Because he did it. Yep. He did it, so now I can do it. Yep. It's like it's a demonstration thing. Yep. The third piece of this during process is listen, I'd like to believe that every business is perfect. I'd like to tell you that every transaction goes perfect with me and my team. And that's a bullshit <laughs> answer, right? And you are setting yourself and up so for we're setting total yourself disaster. Up, right. So <laughs> going back to remember I said in that professional presentation that you should set proper expectations. Well, one of the things I say in every uh, conversation up front is, hey, like if you haven't heard the mortgage industry is kind of crazy right now. There's painful. lots of people buying and there's extra audits because of COVID over the last 15 months. So listen, listen it's like an airplane ride. Expect turbulence. You know, I'm a great pilot. I'm going to land the plane, but turbulence looks like me needing more docks. It means appraisals might come in low. It means that the seller might clean up the house before you move in. There's all these things that all could things. look like. Those, that's all turbulence, but I'm a great pilot. I'll land the plane. So if I say that up front, it's called a sales anchor. Then when we hit that turbulence that we're expecting, like something's probably going to happen, then it's not that big of a deal. And we can address it or even better, my team can say, remember when Josh said remember there's when. some turbulence? This is the turbulence he's talking about. But we got here's the next step. The real piece here is we both believe that the tightest, best relationships and the the opportunity to get the most referrals is usually earned in the worst of times, not when a deal goes perfect. One hundred percent. You step up and solve a problem that other people shy away from. When you uh, lean, like I can think of a hundred times that I've been at a hotel where something went wrong and they didn't brushed handle it, it yeah. didn't handle it, brushed it underneath. Like, Just have you it. ever shown up to an airport before and they said, so sorry, we overbooked your flight. You're screwed. <laughs> Like, it's like, really? I fucking booked this two months ago. It's a wedding yeah. I'm going to. Like, yeah. you get me on the damn plane. Yeah. Like, that's not how you handle it. Uh, same thing with the hotel. Hey, uh, so I just checked in my room, and it's two singles. And this is my honeymoon. <laughs> I would really like a king. We're like, trying we're, to give you a picture of the future, We're going to knock this out. <laughs> 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 but, and then, the, the, like, the right answer is, oh, my God, we're so sorry. Fix let's it. upgrade you just to the fucking king suite. It. Like, let's get just you taken care of. Fix it. Not ignore the problem, right? So those opportunities to get that, like, yeah. it went wrong. There was a problem. They handled it and made it right. It made it right. That's a referral-based business in a nutshell. Like, yeah. Absolutely. And so many people, so many people shy away or hide from the problem, and they ignore the call, ignore the call, because I don't have an answer yet. I don't have an answer. I haven't heard what I need. Yep. I, you know, And it all that does is further escalate. Every time there's a problem, it's just an opportunity to be the hero. Yep. That is it. Yep. Like, and so don't miss out on that and miss. do it quickly because, don't miss. Don't miss. Uh, uh, you know, shitty smelling eggs smell worse in the morning. Facts. Right. So you just, just got to handle it. Yeah. So getting to the end of the during po process that wants you to handle the, the after the next piece of the puzzle is you do have to execute, right? Yeah. Like you made some problems up front, promises up front. Uh, you really do have to give the client what, what you promised them for. for the price you promised them yeah. in the time you promised them period. Mm -hmm. Right. Because so sorry, I promised you all this. You're going to pay me for X and I didn't even do my job plan on never getting a referral ever. Ever. Right. And getting negative reviews too. Right. Um, so you'd really do have to execute. And so having the processes, procedures, checklist to Those make sure you points, like perform is the, the hallmark it's the keystone yeah. of that referral based business, but it's all, not all that's required. Here's why I say that it's an expectation that you're going to perform because no yeah. one signed up to buy this car for it to be a lemon. No True one fact. expected True it to story. be a lemon. <laughs> How you handle True lemon story, yeah. is, a, is, is different, right? right? So the expectation is you're going to give me what I want. The house I want at the price I want, blah blah blah, or and, they wouldn't have gone forward. And with you. anything, and you're gonna take care of me when things go wrong. Exactly like right. you need to have my back. I That's trust what I'm trusting. You have, yeah, you'll have exactly my back. Right. Like, and so the last piece of this specifically is at the conclusion of the execution of getting whoever, whatever for whatever they they wanted, you have to measure it. Like you don't guess how people feel. You ask them, you survey them, you get a specific number back, and you're either the number says you're not passing, you are excelling, 
or you were failing. Yeah. You were getting A's or you're getting C's. And newsflash, if somebody doesn't return a survey, expect it to be horrible. Yeah. Right? Like people that love you, love your team, love your product, they yell from the, the mountaintops. People that yeah. hate your product usually in this day and age don't have the balls to tell you. But so they'll just they'll be they'll be quiet. Yeah. But then they blow up social media. Yeah. They blow up and the next you know, person that type it. of right, exactly right. Yeah. So you have to measure with a survey. That's why every car you've ever bought, like there's a uh, the salesperson is compensated by A getting back all the surveys, but B by getting exceptional surveys by the car uh, the car um, not the car dealer, but Nissan or oh, yeah. Dodge. They yeah. want to make sure that their product is being represented, represented correctly well, yeah. by the salesperson yeah. because they building the cars know that if the salesperson sucks it it's the a direct experience, <laughs> they will not sell more cars because they're not going to be that referral based business. Yeah, so I wanted to get yeah. you people up to understanding like look, the simple triangle for trust, the asking up front for referrals, the telling them what you're going to do for them, mm -hmm. keeping your small cap promises leaning in when things go wrong and, and, and being the solution and then performing and measuring that is the before and during but what's often misses the after the so after. what has to be done after yeah so after it goes back to our follow-up like a badass um this goes back to one not overthinking it to making some sort of consistent uh process that can be followed and not adding to it until you have mastered one thing um i always say don't don't commit to anything that you can't do every single time over and over, even if it means you have to delay the execution of it, um, which is really hard to do for most of us because we're ready to check it off the list. Um, in a nutshell, mail call visit, mail call visit, whatever form of that you can put together. Mail call visit post. Post, be on social media. Um, keep them in contact with things that are pertinent to what they purchased from you. So whether it's mortgage interest rates or recalls or oil changes or decorating tips. I want to pause button there because what Bryn just said, is everyone needs to pay attention to, you want to be the resident expert. Yes. So if you sold them a house, like give them lots of information about yeah. housing, housing prices, mortgage rates. If you sold them a car, like let Close. them know when there is a upgrade available, like. If you're a Ford dealer, you should be pimping out Broncos right now. Like oh, new product yeah. back on yes, the line, right? So cute. And also, hey, there's a recall. But if I was a salesperson, I'd want to make that call to my client to say, hey, dude, just want to let you know, if you keep driving that shit, it's going to like blow up in your face. Come in here. I'll take care of it, right? <laughs> I'll take care of but it. that's how you keep that. Yes. That's yeah, really important. Build, be the expert. Be the expert. Build the momentum. And here's the thing. A lot of a lot of people get really caught up in what am I going to send every single month? I don't have time to think of new content and new creation or new parties or events or social posts. Like, don't overthink it. The simplest is always best. Pick one template, swap out the content, and send that shit over and over again because it goes back to the trust factor. When they know exactly what to expect from your emails because they all look the same, they no longer really have to even read it because they know that that's the invite to this. They know that that's the motivation Monday. They know that that. So even if they watch the content, digest, think it's great or not, it's connecting. And that's all you're looking for. Um, a lot of times too, people get really, um, really caught up in hosting events or, or anything like that, doing a charity drive or a fundraiser. Understand that the, the power lies in the invitation. It's not on the head count of people that show up. It's about the amount of people that you were generous enough to consider to invite to your party or to join you in this cause. Whether three people show up or 30. Whether or 3, 30 or 300. It, it, and again, going back to it's not personal. Um, a lot of people are very socially anxious about going to something that they're not sure what to expect, why they're going, who's going to be there, who am I going to go with, who am I going to talk to? So they, they won't go for that simple reason alone, right? Yep. Um, so just know that the power is in the invitation. Continue to follow up. Con continue to send emails. Even if you are watching your stats and nobody's opening them, they're seeing your name. They're seeing your name. Yep. And that is it. It's just how many times yep. can I show up in front of their world? Because when they do have somebody that comes up to them, they're like, oh, my car's a piece of shit and I need a new one. Oh, 
Mm -hmm. super easy to get their hands on like, Oh, here's this email that I just got or, or whatever. And so with this, to kind of wrap this, this little segment up, because it is a, it's a keep it simple, stupid thing. I will tell you this, the single best question you can ask or, uh, email you can send or form you can have somebody fill out is I need your help. That's so good. I need your help. That is your script. Because if you have somebody that you took care of and they felt taken care of because you did A through Z already, mm-hmm. especially a past client, right? If you got a phone call from your friend and the only call question was, hey, buddy, I need your help. Who do you, you know, I need your help. Business is off a little bit. Who do you know Who that's looking know? to buy, sell, or yeah. refinance? Yeah. You can refer to me. That would be a good fit. I'd really appreciate it if you can send me one person this year. People will help you. And people love people to be a ask. part of helping people hit their goals. Absolutely. So I think that's super important too, is being really clear about what your goals are. Yep. Like this is what I'm trying to accomplish and here's how far I am. And this is a time frame. Going back to the last episode where yep. it was like with the obligation, here's how many referrals I want and this is a time frame. Yep. Share that with people because they're like, I want to help be a part of that. Yep. And, and, that, it's we, and that whole being a part of something, it's why like giving back a portion of proceeds to charities really does work because people mm-hmm. feel like I'm helping out yeah. the community. Um, I just, I, I love the business that we're in. I can tell without going to exact numbers, uh, cause I don't want to ad lib at all, but I know that the average loan officer in the nation does about three loans per month and we do easily five to 10 times that per month off of just past clients just and past, past client clients. referrals. Just past clients. And it, it's a joy to work with a client again and again, and then their kid comes and I help know, them out, and yeah. then their kid gets married and help them yeah. out again. That's what business should be and is lacking sometimes in yeah, America. So it is. It is. It's super cool. Um, and then past that, you know, there's a lot of things you navigate like, okay, what's the messaging and the calls to action and all of the things like that that we can get into, and we will. Um, but at the end of the day, I need like your help. just, yes, I just need your help. I was can I rely on you, you for a referral? Yes. Who do you know? Yes. Just open your damn mouth and ask for it. When we do this together, we'll do this. That's all super fun. But I love that we wrapped up the segment finally. I mean, mean, we've been working on this for a couple of weeks (laughs) now, but um, (laughs) we're going to have a new subject line and a whole new uh, series coming up in the next episode. Yeah, all things business in season two. So. So if you have something you'd like to specifically have us talk about, we'd love to hear from you. So you can reach out to us on any of our social channels. Mm -hmm. You can email us. You can call me. You can email me personally. But uh, it's my pleasure. Always. Always, it is always, super always. super fun. Thank you all for the awesome feedback. Make sure to subscribe um, and tell your friends and family. Until next time. Cheers. Bye-bye, guys.